If you haven't worked out in a while, don't despair. Just like off seasons are a regular part of any other sport, working to get back in shape is possible and easier because you're not starting from ground zero. As you know, it's been a tough season of life. I stopped training for two whole months. My Apple Watch has been shaming me. Before getting back into the swing of things, I wanted to understand the baseline of where my body is right now after not intentionally training. I was inspired by Natasha Ocean's video on what happens when you stop exercising for two weeks. So make sure to check that out linked below. But I definitely could not relate because it's been way longer than that for me. And I know I'm not alone. So I'll be taking you on a deep dive of generally what not working out for two months does to your body. Things will differ person by person, obviously because of genetics, gender, and age, but let's get into it. We're gonna talk about the effects of not working out when it comes to five areas. Muscle size, muscle atrophy, strength, endurance, and fat gain. Firstly, muscle size. You've always heard if you don't use it, you lose it. But in her video, Natasha references articles about how perceived muscle size is still well intact after not working out for two weeks. But after not working out for as much as four weeks, muscle volume can shrink about 10%. You might be thinking, I've stopped working out for a week and definitely saw a difference. What you probably saw was a change in your lean body mass. When you take your whole body weight, subtract the fat, that's your lean body mass. Body weight minus body fat equals lean body mass. When you stop training, one of the first things that happens is the loss of water contents of your muscles. More specifically, there's a drop in muscle glycogen levels. Let's break down glycogen. A science pun for all you nerds out there. Your body breaks down carbs, stores sugar, aka glucose, primarily in your muscles as glycogen. That glycogen is stored with water then contributes to the overall size of your muscles. So after only one week of detraining, aka not working out, your muscle glycogen levels can drop by 20%. Size loss within two weeks is most likely because your muscle glycogen and water stores become smaller. After four weeks, your glycogen levels are close to half of what they normally are. This loss of lean mass returns quickly when people start lifting weights and eating more carbs. The studies show lean body mass start to disappear after about two or three weeks, but take four, five, or six weeks off and your chances of actual muscle mass increase dramatically. Which brings us to muscle atrophy. Muscle atrophy is the loss of muscle tissue. After just two weeks of not working out, there isn't a significant loss in muscle mass. In fact, trained persons performing regular resistance training are encouraged to allow adequate rest between training sessions without fear of atrophy. Brief absences from training appear not to cause significant atrophy and potentially promote greater hypertrophy upon returning to training. Even beginners could take three week breaks from training without significant muscle loss. I do want to distinguish that complete bed rest accelerates muscle loss compared to a gym break where you're still moving and doing everyday activities. It turns out that yes, two months of not working out clearly results in smaller, weaker muscles. But the good news is that when you start lifting weights again, you can expect to gain size and strength faster than you did the first time around. You can safely take a week or two week break from lifting weights without losing muscle mass. After three weeks, you may lose some muscle, but not enough to notice any major difference in your appearance. At the four week mark, chances are good that you'll gradually lose muscle until you start lifting weights again. Once you start working out though, you'll likely regain muscle faster than when you first started training. Now, for me, I definitely have seen a difference in my muscle size and muscle atrophy because we are past that eight week mark now. I wasn't planning on taking a break, so I don't have super nice before videos, but here are a couple of clips from my workout videos, which I do have a bit of a pump, but wow, just looking at these now, I can see the distinct difference in my quads, my hammies and glutes, and my back muscles. Now, here's my after. 
I know my body best, so I can obviously tell all the small differences here and there, but especially since I've been training for years, I've still retained a lot of my physique. Now, make me run a mile or give me the same weights that I was lifting before, and that's when you'll see I am a changed woman. Okay, so let's talk strength. After two weeks of not training for beginners, your one to three rep max can decrease by 10 to 20% but that strength can be regained pretty quickly. For experienced athletes, in fact, it took a full five or six weeks for that strength to decline. Good news for my two months of not training, mostly those last two weeks of the total eight weeks of my not training is when I should have started to see a significant decline in strength specifically. So yes, muscle fibers can shrink during long breaks, but they don't completely disappear. And they do retain a molecular muscle memory that can help them bounce back after months of not exercising. This is because of skeletal muscle cells. Skeletal muscle cells are much larger than most other cells in the body, and they're one of the few cells to not have one, but many nuclei. As you overload your muscles in resistance training, new nuclei are added to the muscle cells, which then allow them to grow larger. A major key the number of nuclei within the muscle fibers is one of the most important factors that regulates muscle size. The new nuclei added during the training period are retained for at least three months yay, of inactivity. Some evidence even shows that these new nuclei are never lost, meaning that strength training permanently alters the physiology of muscle fibers. That molecular muscle memory is what allows you to regain strength much more quickly. I've trained people who used to be competitive athletes as teenagers, then stopped training for years. When they came back 10 plus years later, their bodies were equipped to handle training far more than a beginner starting from absolute scratch. So all that work you did 15 years ago did not go to waste. For those of us who haven't taken years off, but just a few months, one study even found that older adults needed less than eight weeks of retraining after a 12 week break to reach their level of one rep max strength. Now onto endurance. Unfortunately, one of the first things that decline when you become inactive is your cardiovascular endurance. Strength declines less rapidly than cardiovascular health. So whether it be two weeks or two months, this one's gonna have a significant impact. Just after a few days of inactivity, the volume of blood plasma circulating in your body decreases, leading to a series of other cardiovascular changes. After just 12 days, studies show that the total amount of blood the heart pumps every minute decreases by 10%, along with the amount of oxygenated blood available to muscle cells and other cells, measured as your VO2 max. A higher VO2 max indicates a higher level of cardio, fitness, and endurance. In athletes, endurance decreases between 4 and 20 25% after a three to four week break in cardio. Beginners may find their aerobic fitness is back to zero after a four week break. <laughs> Lastly of the five areas that we'll look at is fat gain. This is highly dependent on how you live your life during detraining. During detraining, you're not burning the same amount of calories as you used to because you're moving around and working out a lot less. So if you don't adjust your food intake accordingly, those additional calories will be stored as fat. When you combine not training and overeating, that's where you get to the zone of fat gain. Now, just short periods of overeating won't have as much of an effect if they're isolated. So if you're going through a tough time, give yourself a day or two, cry it out on the couch. But what can actually help you get out of a funk is eating foods that fuel your body. Consuming sugar can cause temporary satiation of stress, but can perpetuate the habit of emotional eating. In fact, following consumption of sugar, hormones are released to reduce the feeling of stress, which also increases the desire for comfort foods, thus perpetuating the emotional eating habits. So if you need it, get that Ben and Jerry's pint, find some immediate comfort when life hits you hard, but everything in moderation. If you don't have the energy to cook for yourself, the amount of times I door dashed sweet green in these last few months because I just did not have it in me to make it myself. And today I feel so much better for it. Alternatively, when you under eat, 
Your body uses muscle for energy and you see more significant muscle loss. Because your body needs energy to survive, it's eating away at your muscles if you don't provide it the nourishment it needs. Which is what happened to me, I think. I saw after two months more significant muscle loss and I think that's because I was under eating, not having an appetite in the season that I was going through. But here we are, ground zero, and I'm committing today to showing up for myself and getting back into it. So will you join me? Let me know in the comments below where you are on your fitness journey and whether it's been a day or a month or five years, it's never too late to jumpstart your fitness journey again. My app, Uplift with Jibby, actually has a kickstart challenge to get you back on track. So join the link below for 14 days free. Well, thanks for going on this learning journey with me. I learned a lot researching this and it's motivating me to get back into it. If you've made it this far, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video so we can continue to grow our YouTube fam. Thanks for watching my studio giblets and I'll see you in the next video.